My name is Karan Allen. I'm a candidate for New York State Assembly, running in the 60th Assembly District, which encompasses the majority of East New York, uh, pieces of Brownsville and Canarsie, and all of Starrett City. Um, organizing experience, besides being at the helm of this space and combating inner city food desert and our community health profile, um, just an all-around organizer. I'm the co-chair for Operation Power, which is people organizing and working for empowerment and respect, a social justice, political, socialist organization, uh, working to make sure uh, that our community is represented by black radicals and that the community members have power. I'm also the deputy district manager for Brooklyn Community Board 5, where we respond to community concerns um, and connect them with the agency representatives uh, that can do something about their issues. In Operation Power, we do a lot of political education uh, to make community members aware of all of the various um, races that are coming up and their own cultural connection to all these things. This race is so important. <laughs> Can't stress it enough. It's so important because our future is on the line. Um, as I said, I'm, I'm the co-chair of Operation Power, um, which has worked to make sure that our community has had representation from black radicals um, who don't go along to get along, don't believe in black faces in high places um, that are duping the community, selling them out, selling them out to real estate and um, private businesses and manufacturing companies that just want to come in and, and extract profit. You know, treat this community like a domestic colony. You know, and what we are on the cusp of is going back to that pre to pre uh, black radical politics uh, taking the helm in the community. So this race is extremely important because uh, my opponent is backed by big real estate, backed by the democratic political machine that is doing everything within its power to carve out East New York and turn it back into a colony and um, really extract the community's resources. It's extremely important. Um, Operation Power is an authentic community, homegrown, um, political group of my community. I like to say it's where our culture and our politics mix um, and culture being a huge thing. You know, black people should be at the lead of all issues and transformations that are happening within their community. It's so important to have Operation Power's blessing. It's extremely important to have that local homegrown endorsement. And it is amazing to have the partnership of NYC DSA because to have other socialists who are doing amazing things all around the city advocating for some of the same issues that we're talking about, whether it's uh, single payer and having universal health care, universal child care, making CUNY free, all of these things we have alignment on. So to have the endorsement of DSA work in partnership and solidarity with various communities around um, the not only the, the five boroughs, but around the state is so, so, so important because we know when we go to Albany, we can't do it alone. Uh, we are one vote on a, a, a state budget that we, we're basically outnumbered on on a lot of issues. So we have to make sure that where there is solidarity from an ideological standpoint, that we're together. And that's why I'm really excited to have Operation Power and NYC DSA together. So where do I begin? Um, so for our district, being safeguarded against gentrification has been the pillar of what both Charles and Inez have been able to um, run on. There's been over 16,000 units of true affordable housing that have been able to be established in, in this community, that has been affordable to the community. When we say affordable, affordable to us. In a community like ours where the area median income is $34,000, or uh, $34 to $36,000, it makes sense that the majority of the units can be affordable to the local population that have weathered the storm when the city and state neglected to put resources in the community. And it's still an issue. Housing is still an issue. So making sure to secure huge wins in that area is number one. There's been over $70 million secured and allocated for local parks and playgrounds. Um, green spaces like this one have been safeguarded against development to make sure uh, that community members can continue to make it safe havens and, and keep the green spaces these are some of the 
small victories that have had a huge impact on the lives of uh, community members all across the state, but specifically right here in the 60th Assembly District. Um, so a lot of work remains, a lot of work is left on the table. Um, as stated before, um, solidarity is extremely important because that alignment is going to be necessary for us to secure some of those big wins. CUNY still ain't free, <laughs> being frank. Uh, universal child care still does not exist. Uh, single payer, making sure everybody has access to health care, still does not exist. Um, all of those things are attainable, close, and can be done. Um, and it's going to take the socialists in office to do it. Uh, because they hold the line, because they are essentially the moral compass of the state when it comes to all of the issues that are important. Um, I would say even jumping back to the legacy of Mr. Barron while in the state assembly, making sure that that reparations bill can and will be passed, that forms a community commission uh, to study reparations and to see how it can be paid out in the state of New York. With the state being, uh, New York State being the only second to Charleston, South Carolina, in terms of the, the amount of um, enslaved people who were a, were a part of their local population, New York has to pay up on that. So these are all things that are uh, left on the table. I thought about this one. Uh, there's, there's several. You know, going down memory lane, uh, seeing friends in, and, and classmates that I went to school with for many, many years, uh, running into a math teacher uh, that uh, I talk about her a lot, Miss Smith. Miss Smith, I always wanted Miss Smith to see me, you know, to see me as a student. I did well, but I, I sometimes felt like uh, the students who weren't doing well got her attention. Um, and to see Miss Smith, when we were doing door knocking, I always talk about the teachers being uh, community teachers. You know, not teachers who are driving in from other spaces and places, but they're teaching young people who look like them, who live in their community, and them having a hand in their future. For me to have an interaction with Ms. Smith, um, to see her in her home, um, and to tell her that, look, I'm running for state assembly, was a moment because I was seen, I was seen by Ms. Smith. Um, and that, that was definitely a special moment. Youth organizations are so important. Um, and to try to put in perspective their level of importance. So when we talk about socialism, I feel like um, people, think about it with a, a sense of maturity that comes from reading lots of books, lots of magazines, lots of articles, and being so versed in uh, the technical language that sometimes we miss that it's, it, it, it's not that deep. You know, not that deep in this respect. Youth organizations have to serve as conduits to make sure that these ideas don't die. That's what I feel like I am. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a conduit between the old guard and bringing it to a new generation. And youth organizations are important because they serve as that same guard. You know, they don't have to wait until they're 30, 40, 50 something to talk about socialism. They can talk about it right now at 15, 16, 17. Um, and that I think is more, it, it, it needs a whole lot more energy uh, injected into it because they have to recognize that without them, all of these wins of right now are for naught because they have to be the ones to champion it and to carry it on.